on. Um, so we know that CNCF, um, we know what to do. We know our code of contact, conduct. We need to be respectful of one another and all of that um, information that we already know. So um, it's good to see you, everybody. Um, hi, and we've got Milad and we've got Anastasia. Hello. And Jay, hi. Um, yeah, so no new faces, I don't think, is what I'm going through figuring out. I think we know everyone. All right, so um, do you want to talk about Deaf Awareness Month and um, starting yours, um, Sandeep? Do you want to have uh, the floor? You want to take it over? Uh, I just wanted to share that uh... Do we want to have any posts that are targeted towards the deaf, uh, um, deaf awareness month about employment? Because this is uh, specifically this month is basically about employment for the deaf community. So if you want to share us some posts related to that. I didn't understand what you wanted to share because we're talking about Oh, deaf oh, employment. Oh, is that now? Correct. Oh, the deaf employment awareness. I think month. um there are you know a lot of deaf people are posting about their employment and what they're doing and just to bring awareness to what positions are out there and then allies can see as well and then people will be aware of what deaf people are doing during Deaf Awareness Month for employment. I think the answer should be yes. Yeah. This is Malad. Um, I've never really heard of Deaf Employment Awareness Month. Is that this month of October? Yeah, it's new to me too, Destiny's saying. Huh. I know that September is a Deaf Awareness Month, but Deaf Employment Awareness Month? I have not heard of that. Travis, yeah. oh, go ahead. So yeah, I know that Deaf Employment Awareness Month. Well, actually, I think this month is Disability oh, Employment oh, Awareness Month, not specifically yeah. Deaf. Oh, Rebecca, you're, are you up to date with that information? Ah. Yeah, and I think this month is Disability Employment Month not deaf awareness or just deaf in ah, it's okay. disability in general and jay is agreeing yeah 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 this is Milad. um yeah so for this particular month um there's presentations planned i know in other places but for me i feel like that's a lot of work to kind of get everything in place for this month now, if anybody else has any time to take that over and maybe make a post on our behalf, then I would support that. Yeah, I think it's easy if we, oops, sorry, go ahead, Rebecca. This is Rebecca. Um, maybe we could set up a calendar for next year and then plan an event because then we'll have more time and it's not already happening. I don't know, just a thought. I agree that you all are have full plates right now and you probably can't take this one. True, Destiny says. Yeah, coupon coming okay. up, so. <laughs> yeah, um, and Destiny saying, yeah, let's move on with the agenda. Um, Sandeep, you're not really finished. Um, let me fin let me allow you to finish what you were saying. Oh. Oh. Yeah, you were going to talk about the last meeting before KubeCon and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, so this is basically going to be our last meeting before we all get a chance to meet in KubeCon. Okay, and then I think uh, the best practices for meetings without interpreters. Uh, I have added some comments, but I think we need to finalize. Uh, maybe I'm not sure if this is the right time for us to actually work on it, or we work on it after KubeCon. 
yeah, what do we need to finalize? I don't like Katarina, Katarina had a draft, and then a couple of us are supposed to add our comments and notes on it. So I've added a few notes, but I think others also need to add their notes. Yeah. I also had a um question for you in the doc, Sandeep, because I think like um calling it a meetings without interpreters seems very much like Deaf always need interpreters, deaf people always. So I think uh, like changing the name because it's like caption space because it's like also like for, for people who are just, uh, who are oral, right? And and um, as well. And then, uh, so I did like all your edit, like um, um, additions. And I think we're in a very good state for the virtual meetings, uh, the in-person ones. Uh, um, Anastasia added a bunch of things in there and then the app someone started with the apps and they're just like like it's great to have the link but we need to add some context right like this is an app for this and it's good like this like uh, um, so this is supposed to be a best practices doc that guides people so uh, we should add some comments about this like you know what is the app good for when should you use it uh, is it free you know things like that so people know what to do with it versus just um, um, adding a link. Um, so that definitely needs to be created. And I don't think it's a long section. It's probably a short se uh, section, but we need to provide context, not just the link, right? And uh, yeah, and then the in-person meetings. Um, I do agree that especially those who have talks are probably going to be very busy. So um, as much as I would love for this to be finalized, uh, we shouldn't be distracting <laughs> from... KubeCon talks. Uh, so maybe let's postpone. Uh, if you're not going to KubeCon, maybe you can tackle this, right? Like people who are not uh, going can certainly, I think, help us move this forward. Yes, Milad. This is Milad. Maybe this is a little bit of a slightly different topic, but in the near future with the CFP for London that's happening, that particular conference, KubeCon, feels like we're getting pretty close to the wire here. Does anybody have any ideas, any plans about London, any ideas of what to do? Um, maybe this topic could be discussed later on in the meeting, or maybe we could talk about it now. I'm not sure. Well, actually, you're right, because I keep post like, it's just so tiring for me that you have to think about the next coupon if you have not even finished your talks. And I don't know how why they keep doing this. It's torture. It's torture. It's terrible. So the CFP closes the week after KubeCon. So we if we want to submit talks, which we should. And so thank you for bringing it up. We have to do this. Ideally, before yeah. KubeCon, because after KubeCon, it's just that one week um, that we could use for reviews. So I think we should again okay. submit two panels. They're always they're always go uh, only gonna submit one, but we have to come with a new topic, which is a little bit hard sometimes because we're always talking about uh, accessibility and uh, for um, deaf and hard of hearing. So we ne need to find a new angle yeah. and. As you know, the panels are super important because that's how we get people who didn't get talks accepted. That's how we can, you know, um, help people actually also get in because it's really hard. And then we need to do like regular talks as well, right? Like technical talks. So um, yeah, I actually, I think probably subconsciously uh, forgot about <laughs> this because it's just so overwhelming. But that is something we should we have to actually tackle as soon as possible on Slack because we don't have another meeting before that. Uh, yeah, yeah, that is why I included it in my agenda. And I don't understand that it's a torture. I think for me it's a triple torture because I have the KubeCon in India as well. I'm just, I'm just playing that. Because with Yukon and Yukon India and now Yukon EU. Yeah. 
It's terrible. <laughs> it's like you hardly get any breathing breath. It's by the time you just breathe in, it's against us, the same cycle as us. Yeah. So I don't think any action like we need to take in this meeting, except for let's start thinking about potential talks and let's pay attention to Slack. And we need to start thinking. Uh, again, I would say two panel ideas and then technical talks. And I'm very sorry. <laughs> I know this is painful. <laughs> This is Milad. Um, I, what I think is important is, you know, London is a wonderful place uh, to have this conference. Plus Anastasia will be there. She lives right in the same country. So we have to take advantage of this opportunity and, you know, make it happen in London. So. I, I agree. Asha, did you have any ideas that you'd like to add? Yeah, Anastasia's saying I don't I don't think we need to um um London KubeCon because we have a lot of busy work with this KubeCon for Salt Lake. So I can't even think about both at the same time, to be honest. So um I will try um to get something um, you know, for Salt Lake done. And then I then we've only got, you know, a whole week before we go and um you know we'll just try our best i guess and Re rebecca has her hand raised cindy what did you mean by nine <laughs> nine days nine days 24th november is the deadline 24th november Rebecca? Yeah, I'm just wondering if you all could explain more about the panels and what that looks like um, at these conferences. I can take that. Um, so, I mean, panel discussions are basically, well, where you have several people uh, with a discussion, right? So instead of um a technical or uh, instead of a talk you can have a te technical panel discussion as well right most talks are done by one or two speakers with slides about a certain topic and then you can have a panel discussion where you have up to five people one person moderates and the other four are panelists and then they talk about something and then specifically for accessibility i think it's interesting to make it more a discussion because like any everyone gets to uh, share their experiences because it's a lot about it. A lot about it is or very important are like personal stories, right? Like why is this important? What were your experiences? Because people know accessibility is important. They just may not understand what it means to an individual lives. So I feel like a panel format is really good, is ideal for that. And we get to add more people, right? Because when you have like one talk, it's one person or maybe two. We, we squeeze two people in all our technical talks. So we always have two people and a panel has five. So it's good for that as well that we get more people um, to participate. So um, Salt Lake is coming soon. And um, we have, um, do we have people leading panels there as well? There, you will have a deaf leader for a panel for that? This is Milad, okay. of course, yes. <laughs> yes, everyone's saying yes. Yeah, and so do we need ideas for that panel? No, that yes. is already set. So the panel, so Salt Lake City, the program is already done. So, but we need a new- But London, uh, Milad's well, saying yes, London, yes, we'll need ideas, yes. yes. Thank you. And I will share the link um, so you can have a look at the abstract. Um, maybe you have ideas about new topics because it's a little difficult because the first time it's like easy, you know, like uh, we've never done this before. And then we do another one. It's like, OK, this time we were more talking about KubeCon and how KubeCon improved. And then it's like, 
how do you reinvent this thing so it's not the same story over and over again? That's a little challenging because we were always talking about accessibility for deaf and hard of hearing at some point. We will have covered everything. <laughs> so we need to be a little bit creative on how we uh, frame ideas and, and change the topics so it's not the same. Yes, Milan's saying, hey, also, oh yeah, Rebecca's saying, um, oh, you froze, can you say it again? What I've noticed is, is really popular is the Slack channel. So we can definitely discuss that there and AI for deaf people might be a popular topic that we could discuss. Um, you know, if you'd like to have um, new creative posts for that, that would be something that might be, you know, like the pros and cons of AI for deaf people. That might be something to consider um, because um, the audience might be really interested in how AI applies to your community, the community. So, um, it, you know, maybe pros and cons, you know, how it makes things accessible or not, what it does. That's just one thought I had. Rob said, yes, oh. Rob said he, he likes the idea. Go ahead, Milad. Yeah, I was, um, you know, I was trying to be careful not to talk over anybody, but anyway, so. Um, yeah, I really want to take the opportunity to tell an interesting story because in Paris, when I was um, doing a talk about accessibility, and um, I was telling a real life story. You all remember that story, right? Um, about the lightning talk that I gave on accessibility. And um, I've done some posts on it. And three times um, I've reused that story and that talk, but from different angles. And I've added different things. I've changed it up, but I've used the same basic story. And um, the topic um, is like two worlds um, in the deaf and hearing world and the technology and how um, deaf and hearing people each have a different approach to the technology and so forth. And um, so I keep coming back to that same story, but I'm very grateful um, for Paris, that opportunity to do that because it has allowed me to have a lot of opportunities and it's made it real easy for me to change that story to match certain situations and new, new environments. And, and it applies here as well, because, um, my experience has been, you know, like I said, being able to change the perspective on that talk and I didn't have to reinvent the wheel on that presentation. I just took what I already had, tweaked it a little bit and applied it to the new situation. So that's something we can also consider. Sandeep saying yes, big thumbs up. And Rob, I had one question. Also, I can reuse, I reuse talks also for various different um, purposes. I've, you know, reused the same topic and edited it a little bit. People that are often in the audience will be at the same talk, but they are able to hear the same message without getting bored. So I think that's really important to be able to do that. Yeah, you can keep the same content, but edit the details and then create a different talk based on the setting. And you can use that for a one or two year period. Yeah, I don't want people to get bored for sure. And London, maybe I'll tweak it some more, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel it's something um, to work on for London and how we tweak our message just a little bit to make it fresh. Great. Catherine, uh, do we have a keynote panel this time? A what? No, a keynote panel. Keynote panel. Oh. No. I tried or again. Maybe... Yeah. Everyone wants to be on a on the keynote. It's I I pitched an idea, but it's like, yeah, I mean everyone wants they get a lot of pressure. <laughs> so um I didn't have like yeah it, it was a beautiful panel yeah <laughs> i'm sitting there drinking my soda while y'all were up on stage doing your panel discussions so um when anastasia was presenting there yeah it was great yeah i'm just playing yeah so um sandeep did you have one more thing um to move on in our agenda did you have another topic to discuss uh 
Yeah, so I think the best practice is we can postpone and you've gone, you know, I think the last that we already talked. And then I think, uh, I think this, maybe I think Rob could take it offline because Jane was working on the Vietnam Sign Language and he wanted to make use of artificial intelligence. So I think this is something that maybe Rob, uh, Jane can take up the Rob offline. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sandeep. All right. The next thing we can talk about is the language glossary. Um, so would you like to take over? Uh, Travis. Yeah, this is Travis. So basically, last week on Thursday, some of us members who are here volunteered to help attend a meeting so that we could create three different signs for three different glossary terms. And yeah, really grateful to everyone. We were able to give that to CNCF for those three words, really amazing. I was blown away by your participation in the way that you were able to help create those signs. So thank you. I'm thinking about canceling the next November meeting because obviously we're already overwhelmed with a lot of things that are going on. So I'm thinking about maybe holding off and then continuing our meeting in December. We could talk more about it during KubeCon week because I know many of us are going to be a part of that and doing that, talk more about the glossary work during that week. But that's all for me. Destiny said, I would like to add one more thing. Um, we need volunteers on that project. So just, um, if you want to be involved in that ASL glossary, please let us know. All right, um, next topic. Catherine, oh, I'm sorry. Um, Sandeep, did you wanna talk about um, adding, well, what did you wanna talk about Sandeep? Was there one more thing you wanted to discuss? Um, the two of us going Yeah, the 12 of us that are going to KubeCon. Um, Sandeep um, had added to the list saying um, there were 12 of us at KubeCon. And is that the correct number? I think that's great. That's amazing. Is okay. 12? That's a lot. Catherine, did you, did you have the next item? 12? Oh, yeah. So uh, yes, yeah, Sandeep added a few uh, points underneath with questions. So I have updates on that. Um, so, well, uh, we have a kiosk, as you know. Um, so the goal is basically creating awareness about the need for accessibility and put a face on, I always call it the abstract concept of accessibility because a lot of people for them, they've never met someone with um, accessibility needs. So. They know the concept, but it's not a human. They haven't been able to connect it to a human. So I think that's like making those human connections is really important, right? So awareness and yet putting a face uh, to the abstract concept of accessibility. Those are our goals. Um, and so one thing that I need to create is create a schedule. So we have the booth in the mornings. It's a little bit more in the mornings because sometimes it goes like until some hours in the afternoon because the day is very long. So it's basically the whole day in half. Um, and we will have to man it during that time. So we'll need two people at any time because we don't want anyone to be alone there. Um, so everyone will have to take a shift or two. We'll, we'll see um, how many we, we are. So I'll create that, sign up for it. Uh, if there are any talks that you have, yeah, make sure you don't sign up when you have a talk or uh, uh, when you want to watch a talk um, because we do need you there. Um, and then as giveaways, we're going to have Ally stickers, Ally stickers, uh, our little um, uh, mascot. And we're going to, ha uh, we'll have a monitor uh, with the slide. I put it, uh, I, I link to it in the agenda. So have a look if we want to change anything. Um, um, we could do that. Um, we will need a laptop. Probably we could use mine, but like if people are having their laptops as well, it would be good just in case. I don't know if I need mine or something because we need to connect it to a laptop. 
Um, Milad, you wanted to say something? Yeah. At Paris, um, KubeCon, we had experience with the kiosk and um, it was a little bit challenging um, because people would come up and they'd be like, well, how do we join? How do we get involved? And um, so people were pretty excited and we'd um, show them the link on the laptop, but they they were trying to get it on their phone and it wasn't it wasn't fast. It wasn't working well. So um, the QR code that we had. Um, I think that would be easier to ha have that than what we had in the past rather. Um, and I don't know if we have any options for easy access so that people weren't overwhelmed with trying to write something down and keep that. Do you want to? Uh, yes. I was going to say the same that, uh, that we had a QR code in the slide so that people can very easily join the CNCF class. And the second thing is that we can reuse the Excel that you had created last time, Catherine. So this time we have a more number of folks. So basically, we have more time to attend the talks that we want. Because last time there were very few people, now we have many more people. Yeah, that's true. Go ahead, Travis. Yeah, this is Travis. So. Malad, you brought up a good point of having people trying to join. And I just being honest here, I've never been to KubeCon before, but do you actually have deaf people that are attending KubeCon that don't know about us? And then I'm I'm wondering yes. what yes. 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 what's the average of deaf attendees at conferences? In Chicago, we met how many people, Jay? Um Jay's saying at least one or two people. Oh, we, we met them, Destiny's saying, but like they didn't know anything about our group. And um, really, um, and they were shocked by the interpreters. So it was funny um, because, um, you know, we had other interpreters they saw talking and then, and it was just us. And they thought it was just, they had interpreters assigned to them, but they didn't realize there was a whole big deaf group. And then they found us. So it was, it was deaf people who had no idea about our working group. Um, yeah, like people were shocked. So Milad in Paris, did you meet any deaf people there who didn't know about our working group? This is Milad, you mean in Paris? It was a little different. Um, there was interpreters present, uh, French sign language interpreters, and they, you know, were there. They were able to to converse, um, but it. I don't think any new deaf people. I think I saw one maybe new deaf person that came over. They looked at me. They saw that I had a cochlear implant. Um, and excuse me, interpreter. They had a baby that was deaf and that had a cochlear implant. And they wanted to know about my experience. I think they were from Germany visiting the conference, but I gave them my contact information. Haven't really heard from them. We'll see. Yeah. And that's how Sandeep found us. If you don't remember, he didn't know about us. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. And, um, were we were we presenting or we were just sitting down and just and he just sat down and started talking with me and um I'm like oh yeah we have a working group and I gave him all the information and here's Sandeep so um you know it happens all the time and now he's here this is Milad um I have a question to for you Catherine it seems like uh name sign what I don't I don't know Um, I still don't know who. <laughs> Rebecca. Rebecca, sorry, oh. sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so Rebecca is joining the work group here. Um, she's a little bit late, so I don't know if she's able to make the conference in Salt Lake City. Are you able to attend Rebecca or no? Um, Sorry, no, I can't go. Mm -mm. All right, well, yeah. 
maybe hopefully London, you would be able to join us, Re Rebecca. Yeah, please email me the information about when London is. I'm not sure when that conference would, is taking place. April, I think, I'm not saying, I think April. Mm -hmm. Because I'll keep it in mind then we'll see. But I can definitely support from where I am. <laughs> support you all in Salt Lake City from, from afar. Thank you, Rob, saying thanks. Appreciate that. And on LinkedIn, you know, you can um an X and all all of the uh, social media platforms. So yes, you can absolutely forward our stuff and share and thank you. We appreciate that. But um we had an email um, about doing talks and the media, um, using the media kit for talks at Salt Lake. And don't forget, we have that too. Okay, next, I think it's Catherine. You want to take the floor, your part? Yeah, so and the other thing is, oops. Oh. Yeah, oh yeah, the the GitHub. I'm sorry, DEI Hub. Oh, DE. Thank you, DEI Hub. Yeah, at um, I, Catherine, you were going to talk about the DEI Hub for the conference. Yeah, so the CNCF is doing a DEI Community Hub. Is actually the full name. Um, you may have seen the post in the KubeCon uh, channel, and uh, so we will have. Well, if you remember our um, open space discussion and the crash course, the sign language crash course. So this will be part of the DI hub. It's in a specific room um, and it will be one after the other. So I, I think it's kind of a little bit of a shame. I wish it would be spread out so different people see it. So we'll see, but they feel like it's better to do it one after the other, but maybe they're right, you know. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to have on Thursday first the discussion and right after uh, the crash course. Uh, and uh, hopefully because it's part of this bigger thing, um, people are going to be more aware and actually put this on their schedule and come versus last time. I, I don't know if you remember, but I was really pulling people from the show floor. <laughs> it's like telling them, hey, this is going on. Uh, no one knew, uh, even though it was also in the program, but there's just so much going on. So hopefully this um, will have a lot more awareness because as you remember, people who actually did attend were very engaged and they loved it. So I think it is a good thing. So uh, yeah, I put it in there, South Lake City, like the convention center, level two room, whatever, you know, Thursday, four to five, and then the, the discussion and then six uh five to six the crash course um so that's a new thing let's see what it happens they're gonna have a bipoc session they're gonna have like an lgbt lgbtq one so it's gonna be like different themes and then there's going to be the deaf and hard of hearing uh one as well um yeah so i think that's what we have uh oh and then of course we do have an interview with the cube uh, the cube uh, so uh, destiny and rob did one milat and anastasia did one um so we'll see who does uh, the next one uh they are very very supportive uh she um savannah like the reporter like the um, moderator interviewer she loves this group and is very supportive i wish more media were like that but they are like we're always going to talk to you so she's she's just awesome and the whole team is awesome so um, uh, so we'll definitely do that as well. So we have to schedule that. Um, and yeah, that's all I have for this coupon. We need to kind of create the schedule and so on and think about London, which is <sighs> very tiring, but we'll have to do it. I think, I think Thursday, the Thursday is going to be an incredibly busy day because at three twenty-five to four is the talk. Then four to five p.m. is the we have the DI hub meeting, and then five to six p.m. is the sign language class for total in book. Yeah, as you know, KubeCon is work. Yeah. 
it's fun, but it's a lot of work. But I actually have a question like, okay, so basically the idea behind the DI hub is that it will be listed on the schedule so that basically people can sign up and be present in the room. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was also on the schedule before, but it was in the exhibit hall. And the idea is that they will promote the DEI community hub as such. So it's not just this one thing here like we had before and which is easy to miss. So um, hopefully it will, again, it's new. It's very, it's hard to get people's attention with so much uh, going on and so much top and so much, so many topics going on. And also, I think a lot of people are interested in these topics, but we're also competing with very hot talks about AI and whatever. And that's always very difficult because you're like, oh, here's a talk about the newest trend in AI or like this DI conversation. And it's like, sometimes it's like people are actually going there for the tech discussion. So it is tough because we're basically making people choose. Um, which is why I wish they would do this in between sessions. So it's not necessarily competing with technical talks, but. Uh, yes, yes, I think I agree with what you are saying, Catherine. Uh, I also initially also wanted it to be like the open space discussion we had last time in the exhibit hall. But I think you see uh, the UK North America is going to be much bigger than the Europe or the Paris one. And so it is very hard for people to find where we are located in a small corner. So I think having a dedicated room is maybe basically much better actually, because people can know that we are going to be there and they will be easily able to find us, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm going to suggest like maybe the social media team can also do like a few social media posts just before it starts, kind of saying starting now, kind of supporting these initiatives more than because they don't do that for the individual talks. But this since this is something a little different at CNCF kind of driven content. So maybe um, they could do that and then people just see it on Twitter, you know, oh, this talk is about to start. So maybe that helps. But it is, you've seen how big it is. It is very difficult to get people's attention. So that's always the challenge. Okay. Um, any questions or feedback or other thoughts on that, Destiny Singh? I have an idea. What about we make a video, like a quick little vlog talking about what's going to be happening, what we're going to be talking about in Salt Lake City and you yes. know, a, video, a promo video that we edit and make, you know, attractive, but short, and we can post on social media. Thoughts? We can talk about that. I know you have a lot of work already happening. Milad, you mentioned that, and I think it's a great idea, and I, it would be even greater if we could add, add captions, because our audience are hearing people, because the deaf people attending are mostly on this call. Oh. <laughs> so I don't know if that's something yeah. we could do. We could do just maybe a one minute long video, something yeah. really easy. Inviting people. But before, we have to kind of write a little script. It, yeah. And then I think if we make the video uh, and it looks nice and it's short, uh, I'm pretty sure the CNCF would post it themselves. So we could basically, we give them material to promote it. So I think if we make it easy, they support, you know, they, they don't have this capacity to create all that stuff themselves. But if we create something that looks nice, it's short and kind of promotes this, uh, we make it as if it is a, a video from them, you know, like it is from them, basically it's from our group, right? I think, uh, posting it on their um, feed will go much farther. Go ahead, Sandy. Uh, okay. I, just, I just wanted to quickly say, maybe we stop the recording because I think Milad also wanted to discuss something. So I think we can stop the recording so that maybe folks can freely talk. Mm -hmm.
no one can stop the recording because this is a CNCF Zoom and you have to be an administrator. Uh, is it hey. then I don't know we have those six country back come. So during the last five or ten minutes, we always stop the recording and then people have very free flowing conversation. That's because someone owns the meeting. Here, no one is the administrator. Or I don't see any way to stop this. But I oh, think so that can share on DM. So basically, when the meeting starts, the recording automatically starts here? Yeah? Yes, it does it because otherwise people forget oh, wow. to report. Oh, wow. I, in the other meeting, the people started, the administrator has the right to start, and then the administrator stops it. Yeah, so why I got it. Yeah, all the beginning. Sorry? Go ahead. Oh, why don't you like him? Why don't you give administrator right to share destiny, Rob, and you are a couple of people to start with? It's probably too complicated to manage all the rights and who gets which powers. It's easier to just give people. There are so many CNCF meetings. Every day there are multiple. So I think that's probably an administrative um, pain to give, to make sure always the right rights are updated. Someone leaves and then imagine, imagine there is a, it, it's plausible that I day Destiny, Rob and I couldn't make it and who gets to record then. So it's like, it's, We can always go on to Slack. Somebody suggested we can jump to Slack. This is Travis. Hey, Catherine, you mentioned that um, someone needs to volunteer to bring their laptop to the kiosk. Is that what you said? So I will have mine uh, and we can probably use mine for the monitor, but it would be good if we have another one in case I need mine. Cause it's like, there is a monitor and if it's just black, it just looks horrible. Uh, and we do want to have project a slide. Um, so it just doesn't depend hundred percent on, on me having my laptop there. It would be good. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, I don't mind bringing my own laptop. Um, but I don't know. It's an expensive laptop. I am concerned about the security in there. I'm not quite sure. I can assume that everyone is going to be looking out for everybody else at KubeCon. Um, is the is there security there to make sure that the laptop and the technology is safe? Uh, well, the laptop, I mean, the, there should always be two people at the kiosk, right? So two of us should always be there. Okay, I understand. And Milad's saying, hey, um, Catherine, also regarding a laptop, um, what are we showing? Do we have a slideshow or just one slide? Yeah, it's linked in the um, agenda. Uh, it's the old one. So I think we're going to add a QR code, right? That's the change. And if we want any other change. Oh, I know what we yeah, should I do. would suggest too. Yeah. I know what we should add to. We should add a slide and we can add that with all the talks that we have because we have to kind of show how many talks we have. So when people come to the kiosk, we can say like, hey, here yes. are the talks for our team. Good so idea. It's definitely kind of. Uh... Yeah, I mean, I would like to suggest as well, Minlot saying about uh, the use of the laptop. Um, maybe we should print out a nice like board or something that we can display rather than having the laptop up so that it can just be there and we don't have to depend on the laptop maybe just a nice display um of some sort that we can print ahead of time and then it would be easy to just have it there without having people's laptops it's just a thought i like that idea destiny's saying because then um like in chicago i remember we had um, lots of other um, kiosks that they, they used um, QR codes. And I was thinking, oh, I wish we had a big sign that said that, you know, where they could easily access that and get all the information they need there. So um, having the QR code on badges, you know, and then um, all the information about the conferences there, that was easy. So having it on some sort of sign or board would be nice. Rob saying yes. And um, 
yes, let's get that. <laughs> and you're getting a lot of spam if you sign up for that with the QR code on some of the stuff. <sighs> Milad saying there's a lot of people signing out one time. I'm having a hard time tracking this. Yeah, the QR code, you get a lot of spam with your email sometimes. But I remember um, it's not like you're signing up, but it, it is kind of because the system is, you know, they're all every time you scan one of the QR codes, it comes with different things. So, um, yeah, it's definitely spam, Rob Singh. This is Travis. Um, I just want to clarify. It's not like I don't want to bring my laptop. I understand the purpose of it. I just don't want to talk and explain about, you know, everything that's happening when people are also watching a video. I just want to keep it really simple. So yeah, I, I'm just saying, you know, if I had to run to the bathroom and there's only one person at the kiosk, who's watching that laptop? You know, I don't want to have to depend on that one person. So just wanted to clarify my concerns. So thank you. Rob saying we have nine minutes left time check eight minutes <laughs> um if we have anything else to add anyone or we can end the meeting and then run over to slack for um the good news <laughs> thumbs up from sandeep yep this jay says good yes okay so we'll see you all oh, on slack question. Love you. Bye. <laughs> one question so if we if i were to join the slack huddle it will have captions or something it has captions or not? Um, yeah. Yeah, okay. it should have cop it should have captions. Um, but there is no interpreter. There's a gear <laughs> that you can click, and that will show you the caption button. But there's one one really not so great piece. Um, the huddle captions they come up over people's faces. So they do cover the face. So if they're signing, that is one really negative part to the huddle caption feature. Just yes, know but if you... It's okay. Something is better than nothing. <laughs> yes, if we would have interpreters, this is a meeting without interpreters. So uh, it's not so... <laughs> There's nothing to be on the captions. I think yeah, we'll Milad... voice, somebody will voice for Sandeep. This yeah, is oh. Uh... oh yeah, let's hurry. Let's uh... go. Hurry up AI, right? Yeah, I think Yeah, somebody will have to type notes or type for Sandeep. Well, somebody will type. We'll we'll get it there. We'll get the information. Okay. Okay. Thank you, everyone, and see you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.